Good afternoon, church family and friends. Pastor Sam again with Pastor Sam's Wednesday night musings. It's good to have everyone tuned in. We survived our first landfall hurricane this season. I hope everyone got through it okay. Not a monster hurricane, but a hurricane nevertheless. Amen? Who can pronounce for me the name of the hurricane? Somewhat of a mystery was to me, so I looked it up, and what a strange name I thought when I first heard it. Odd name for a hurricane, a foreign name, no less. Evidence of the increasing Latino influence in our entire culture, which maybe it should be, but that is not the point tonight. The point is in the name, which according to an online authority comes from Spanish and Portuguese derivations and is pronounced, if I can get it right, Isaias. Very simple, Isaias. It's the Spanish equivalent of the name of the Hebrew prophet Isaiah or Isaiah which means God is my salvation. So I thought to myself, how can a name with a core meaning of salvation be chosen to represent the deadly forces of nature? I thought at first it seemed almost like a bad joke at best and a little blas uh, blasphemous at worst. I had a negative sense of the whole thing and so I reflected on how our human nature often attributes natural disasters to some humanitarian sidebar purpose of God that sort of fits our idea of things, rather than just accepting the fact that there are natural disasters that occur simply because. But a hurricane named after the prophet Isaiah, now that should cause us all to pause and think objectively a little bit for a moment, and so I did, and I questioned is it prophetic that this hurricane at this time with all that is going on should be named God of our salvation? Maybe it's not even the hurricane that is important here, but again, rather the name. Is God speaking to us about salvation in the midst of death and destruction? Is God reminding us out of linguistics, if you will, that our lives can be taken in a moment's notice and that we should all be focused on our relationship with him and not what category storm we may be facing. I tell you this, that life itself can be a category five storm where we are all looking for a savior, amen? Or at least should be. Could it be that God is merely whispering to those who have ears to hear and eyes to see and hearts to receive that he is the God of our salvation, even in the midst of a life-threatening hurricane or the damaging storms of life like a COVID-19 pandemic or national unrest and violence and political insecurities. So to be clear, just what forces are a hurricane made of? They're high winds and high water, wind and water. Elements that in biblical terms represent the salvation of God's people. We all know that it began with the flood and through an ark and the salvation of God's people in light of what was going on in the world at that time. And much later with the mighty winds that separated the waters of the Red Sea, just long enough for the Hebrew children to escape from Egypt and its Pharaoh. And as through the waters of the Red Sea, the children were saved, and today it is through the waters of baptism that we enter into the family of God and become the children of God. It was the high wind and storm of the Sea of Galilee that caused great fear in the passengers of the boat that night. The disciples, as they roused Jesus, who was unimpressed with the wind and the waves and reminded them then and us today that he is the master of both the winds and the waves and that it is through him that we have our salvation. And to fear not, O ye of little faith. I'm also reminded that shortly after the death of Jesus and the concerns about the life of the movement, when while gathered and praying together, the disciples and the followers of Jesus became aware of a mighty rushing wind blowing into the room in the form of the Holy Spirit, which breathed life into the church at that time, 
and represents the life and power of the church today. So rather than, like me, questioning or perhaps criticizing the name of hurricanes, why don't we give thanks to God for reminding us in his not-so-subtle ways of doing so to those who are aware that no matter the storm in our lives, God is our salvation. The lesson here for me is to forever be attentive to how God may be speaking to us through the ordinary occurrences of life the name of a hurricane, rather than trying to attribute divine interventions to everyday life catastrophes. But if we look deeper and wiser, we can always discern the variety of ways that God speaks to us about God's love and God's care and concern for each of us and about his everlasting purpose of redemption for every single human life. Well, we're about out of time and I thank you for your time and look forward to these Wednesday night musings and looking forward to our Sunday Sunday morning drive-in uh, church that uh, is really doing well. I want to encourage those of you who are able uh, to come and share with us. Be part of what's going on in the life and ministry at Pleasant Hill United Methodist Church. Participate. Uh, come and let your your uh, your neighbors see you and and you get to see them it gives us a great sense of connection in a time where we're pretty much isolated from one another for those of you who don't live nearby and can't come i encourage you to find some place that you can attend and get connected hear the word of god preached give thanks to god in all things and so until we meet again May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may his countenance rise up upon you and bring you peace today, now, and forevermore in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen and amen.